for consideration. I've seen this before. Under introduction, it says, the Standards of Conduct Office of the Department of Defense General Counsel's Office has assembled the following selection of cases of ethical failure for use as a training tool. Our goal is to provide DOD personnel with real examples of federal employees who have intentionally or unwittingly violated the standards of conduct. Some cases are humorous, some sad, and all are real. Some will anger you as a federal employee, and some will anger you as an American taxpayer. Dot, dot, dot. Page 5. Abuse of position and bribery. A military service captain used his official position as a reservist to obtain contracts for private sector companies with which he had an affiliation. In addition, the captain accepted a finder's fee, i.e. kickbacks, from one company for his efforts in helping the company obtain government contract work. For his significant ethical failure, the captain was allowed to retire at the grade of commander, though he had been selected to be an admiral. In addition, the captain was debarred for one year, while two of the affiliated companies entered into administrative agreements for three years with the military service. Coercion by supervisor, page six. The director of a naval health clinic received a $3,000 loan from a subordinate after requesting that the subordinate loan him $6,000. The $3,000 apparently wasn't enough, however, and the director later asked for 10,000. This time the subordinate declined. After the director only repaid a fraction of the $3,000, the subordinate approached the chain of command. In addition to being directed by his commanding officer to repay the rest of the loan, the director was provided with a letter of counseling regarding his unprofessional and unethical conduct. Abuse of his positions, page 7. A former ATF chief, Carl Truscott, was investigated by the Department of Treasury Inspector General and found to have committed numerous ethics violations. Among them, Truscott was found to have misused his position and to have wasted government resources by giving his nephew unlimited access to ATF employees and resources for a school project. The ATF's Office of Public Affairs staff was told by Truscott to comply with all of his nephew's requests. The OPA staff ended up spoon-feeding Truscott's nephew. OPA staff spent numerous hours conducting research on publicly available information, mailing the nephew hard copies, providing the nephew with stock film footage, and conducting tours and interviews for the nephew. Truscott also asked employees at the Philadelphia field office to escort his nephew on tours and to perform demonstrations of canine drug detection for him. When Truscott's nephew requested to visit the ATF headquarters, Truscott allowed him to use the ATF equipment, including the ATF's film studio cameras and teleprompters, to film interviews. Additionally, Truscott gave his nephew three personal interviews, including one at the construction site of the new ATF building, where Truscott, his assistant, and an OPA staff member had to travel to give the interview. Truscott also used his speechwriter to draft talking points for him to use in the interviews. And, as if that were not enough, after the nephew completed the video and received an A grade for it, Truscott continued to allow him to make requests to the ATF for suggestions on improving the video. One employee reported spending four or five days complying with the nephew's request. The IG was unable to tally the total number of employees and hours that were devoted to Truscott's nephew, but estimated that at least 20 ATF employees were involved. The IG determined that Truscott violated government regulations prohibiting federal employees from using their office for private gain, wasting government resources, and influencing subordinates to waste government resources. Office of the Inspector General, Report of Investigation Concerning Alleged Mismanagement and Misconduct by Carl J. Truscott, former Director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. DEA agent misuse of position, page 9. A DEA agent whose responsibilities included fleet management and authorization of repairs of government vehicles had attempted to obtain free repair services for her personal vehicles from two vendors. The agent also insinuated to the vendors that the cost of repairing his personal vehicles could be recouped as part of the charges for repairs to government vehicles. After these allegations were substantiated, the agent was dismissed from DEA. Improper use of position. The Department of Justice Office of Professional Responsibility, OPR, investigated allegations that a Department of Justice DOJ attorney prepared another person's application for a visa with a cover memorandum on DOJ stationery. The DOJ attorney also included one of his DOJ business cards in the submission. The foreign individual was seeking a visa in order to enter the country to perform certain functions for a nonprofit organization. 
The DOJ attorney told OPR that he did not intend to gain preferential treatment for the visa applicant by identifying himself as a DOJ attorney, but believed his actions were consistent with what DOJ employees were permitted to do on behalf of nonprofit organizations. OPR concluded that the actions of the DOJ attorney were improper, but not intentionally so. Section 2635.003 of the Standards of Ethical Conduct for Employees of the Executive Branch prohibits employees from using their position or title for purposes of endorsement. But, Judge, I didn't get anything. Page 10. An offshore safety inspector found much of the government's equipment to be in need of repairs to meet safety standards. He then referred the business to his brother-in-law's repair shop. The rig operator smelled a rat and called the FBI. They discovered that, in return for each referral, the brother-in-law was treating the inspector to an evening with a lady of dubious morals. The case was brought to trial. In his defense, the inspector claimed that he had not received a, quote, thing of value in return for the referral. The judge didn't buy it, and neither did his wife. Use of contractor time. Page 10. Allegations were made against the Department of Defense DOD official regarding its use of contractor employees. The official directed two U.S. government contractors to entertain an acquaintance he met at a conference in Europe on his behalf. They were directed to take the person out to lunch as well as out on the town the following evening. The contractors rightly believed that the request was improper and as a result told the DOD official that they, quote, had other plans, end quote. The DOD official told them to, quote, cancel them, end quote. The contractors eventually took the acquaintance out that evening for several hours. After an investigation, it was determined that the DOD official had acted in violation of 5 CFR, CFR 2635.704 by utilizing contractors' time improperly. The supervisor counseled him, and the proper reimbursements were made. Interior official altered reports and leaked confidential information, page 11. The Interior Department's Inspector General found that a senior official had repeatedly altered scientific field reports to lessen the protections for imperiled species and ease the impact on landowners. The investigation also revealed the official who works in Fish and Wildlife Services misused her position by disclosing confidential information to private groups seeking to affect policy decisions. The Inspector General referred the case to the department head for, quote, potential administrative action, end quote. It says that there is a uh, citation to an article uh, that is uh, also uh, comparable to what was revealed in the audit from uh, the uh, uh, Comptroller uh, General uh, from 1982 uh, that I evaluated earlier last week. This book was published in 2015. My understanding is that in 2018, the Department of Justice also charged a comparable case, perhaps this one. Page 14, contracting official in Afghanistan pleads guilty to bribery. A government employee at Bagram Airfield pled guilty to accepting bribes in exchange for awarding government contracts. The employee was responsible for evaluating trucking contractors and assigning each contractor days of work each month based on their performance. The employee was approached by a contractor and ultimately accepted a wireless telephone and $20,000 a month in exchange for assigning an extra day of work each month to that contractor. He also made a similar deal with another contractor for $15,000 a month. In all, the employee received about $87,000. He was sentenced to 40 months in prison and three years of supervised release. I have to be honest with you. Pretty much every single thing I'm looking at is, is jumping out at me, right? Page 14, major wrongdoing. A retired Army Major Christopher H. Murray, Camp Arifshin, Kuwait. $225,000 in bribes for DOD contractors. $20,000 in bribes from a DOD contractor in exchange for the award of a construction contract. Then it talks about his pen, his, his, uh, the penalties, but then it also talks about another person at the same camp. Army Major James Momin, Jr. Momin, a contracting officer at the camp, awarded contracts and blanket purchase agreement calls to those contractors, receiving $5.8 million as payment for his actions. These contracts, what did they include? Moment has also agreed to pay $5.8 million in restitution. 
then Camp Victory, a Army reservist received money orders and a Harley Davidson motorcycle from a defense contractor. But here's the thing. What's on the next page? Courting trouble. Page 16. A former official of the U.S. Tax Court, Fred Fernando Timble Jr., was sentenced to 18 months in prison and three years of supervised release in connection with a bribery conspiracy. Timble was a facilities service officer in the facilities management section of the U.S. Tax Court. Timble was responsible for assisting in the award of contracts to contractors who provided maintenance, construction, and other related services to the court. Timble admitted to soliciting and accepting over $12,000 from a government contractor in exchange for rigging the award of at least six inflated contracts. As part of a plea agreement and by order of the court, Timble also agreed to pay restitution of. Are you serious? Page 18, regarding a solicitation of a bribe from an employee at the Defense Mega Center at Kelly Air Force Base, Texas. What's the law say? 18 U.S.C. Section 201 B2A 2003. Bars any public officials and any persons selected to be public officials from seeking anything of value in return for, quote, being influenced in the performance of any official act, end quote. The penalty for violating this law can include fines, imprisonment for up to 15 years or both, along with possible disqualification from holding, quote, any office of honor, trust, or profit, end quote, from the United States government. Let me ask you a question. Is anything of value, does that cover proposed pieces of legislation? Is a proposed piece of legislation considered something that is a thing of value? What about a legal petition, including a petition to the Supreme Court? What if you didn't actually give it to them? What if they took it and used it on their own? What if they took it and used it on their own and in the meantime tried to influence you to do things that were illegal, up to and including acts of prostitution? Page 19, not so much of a bright bolt. A former supervisor in the Bureau of Indian Affairs used a government-issued credit card to purchase excessive quantities of overpriced light bulbs from a North Dakota company. In exchange for his act as a poor shopper, he accepted $21,000 in bribes for a savvy purchasing. He was sentenced to one year and nine months in prison and ordered to pay $72,000 in restitution. That seems pretty severe, huh? 18 U.S.C. Section 201B, 2003, forbids federal employees from, among other things, seeking or receiving anything of value in return for being influenced in the performance of an official act or to commit or to assist the commission of any fraud against the United States. Let me remind you, frauds against the United States is also prosecutable under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Any fraud, I contend, also includes pension fraud. Page 20, Congressional Aid Sentence for Corrupt Activities. A former staff assistant to a U.S. congressman was convicted of two counts of accepting gratuities, 18 U.S.C. 201, and one count of devising and carrying out a scheme to defraud the government, 18 U.S.C. 1341. The aide was sentenced to 18 months imprisonment on each count, followed by two years of probation. The staff assistant accepted $3,700 for assisting individuals in obtaining permanent residency status by sending endorsements on the congressman's letterhead to the Immigration and Naturalization Service, INS. The aide was also involved in a scheme to defraud aliens seeking permanent residency. The aide told the aliens that if they were members in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they would be eligible for permanent resident status, even though the INS Special Religious Immigrant Work Program covers only church workers and their immediate families who are employed by a religious organization. The aliens were informed that for a fee, the aid would assist them in applying with the INS. The aid received approximately $400,000 from 1,000 aliens. Just so you know what was just discussed, 
is exactly the scenario you're trying to run on one of the two people. It is, isn't it? Except you don't want them to be Seventh-day Adventists. You want to pretend and you want to accuse them of actually being Muslim, but pretending to be a kind of Christian, a specific kind of Christian that is actually a minority within the United States and has a specific kinds of not only doctrinal, but also political distinctions in terms of how it administers its Christian ministry relative to the predominant trend of Christendom in the United States. Page 20. HUD official and realtor in prison for bribery scheme. A former official at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, was sentenced for his role in a bribery scheme involving HUD properties. The former official was paid bribes by a realtor who in exchange was sold HUD properties at lower than their appraised values. The bribes totaled over 10% of $800,000. What percent, by the way, paperclip, what percent of $800 million is $80,000. Continuing, including a BMW automobile. In return, the HUD official sold the realtor 20 HUD properties at one-third. Really? Their appraised value. The realtor then resold the properties at their full market value. In addition to other charges, both the HUD official and the realtor pled guilty to one count of 18 U.S.C. 201 each. The HUD official was sentenced to a 24-month prison term followed by three years probation and was ordered to pay $1.4 million in restitution. The realtor was sentenced to a 27-month prison term followed by three years probation and was also ordered to pay. Really? What year was this case? Was it a HUD official? Or was it only a HUD official because of the position in the line of secession that HUD was listed under the executive order? I'm only on page 20 to 21. I'm going to stop here.